Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Laura, your host, and you are listening to Her Journey Towards Change. And today um, I'm interviewing Ronnie Rock, and she's here to discuss her book. Ronnie Rock weaves themes of transformative hope and grace-filled leadership into everything she shares on page and stage. She's an author and speaker offering honest encouragement and road-tested wisdom, which I love that. I'm going to ask her about that one. Road-tested wisdom about topics ranging from leadership and ministry engagement to discovering your God-crafted design and purpose. You'll find her words on work and life balance shared in the Joyful Life magazine, and her stories of hope are offered up regularly as she serves as engagement manager for Orphan Outreach, which is a global nonprofit that provides care for the orphaned and vulnerable. Her book, One Woman Can Change the World, Reclaiming Your God-Designed Influence and Impact Right Where You Are, is available wherever you can buy books. Ronnie lives in Texas Hill Country with her husband, Brad, and her rescue pup, Pearl. So welcome, Ronnie. I'm so glad to meet you. So glad that you're finally here. We've tried a few times to schedule this and we've had to reschedule. So it's really good to finally meet you today. I know. I'm so glad to see. I feel like I know you already from from the interwebs and things, but oh my gosh, there is nothing like seeing, and this is as close as it can be right now, Mm -hmm. right? Seeing a real life human person. Yes. via Zoom. I will take it. I will take it. It's perfect. At least we don't have to wear masks doing this. I know. I mean, that's okay. Even though I have been, I have, I have my collection now. I'm, isn't it weird? I'm pretty much fashion forward with my masks. I'm these serious days. though. You know, when this whole thing started back in March, it's like everybody had to start wearing a mask and it's like, okay, this is only going to be for a little while. Mm-hmm. But like we're into it almost a year now and yeah. Yeah. you still see masks and it's like, it's more like if you don't wear it, it's mm-hmm. weird when you don't wear it. <laughs> yeah, I and know it, my, uh, my grandson in particular, I mean, both my grandkids, they um, are in school and their school meets in person, the kids mask up and stuff. And my grandson will forget to take his mask off. Yeah, And they'll go, hey, Sawyer, you can take your mask off. And he goes, why? It's comfy. <laughs> because they, and they do, they have the mask mm-hmm. that, you know, they're super comfy and stuff. And to him, it's, it's no different than him snuggling up with a blanket. It feels good. It's cozy on his face. He's not bothered by it. And so I look at their attitude and I think, oh my goodness, we grown ups could because the kids, I, I realize it's not that way for every child. So I'm not trying to just clump everybody. But man, I look at a lot of kids these days and they are, they're like, it's, hey, it's what we do now. It's okay. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're adjusting and we'll, we'll be okay. And so, you know, as long as we need to in order to love our neighbors well. And that's what my husband and I say all the time. It's like, is it? Is it a bother? Maybe sometimes. Yeah. I don't know. But do I want to love my neighbors well? And right. the answer is yes. That's true. And so to get to wear, like on Sunday this past weekend, we masked up and went and had church. We meet online right now. Our church is so small that we have literal Zoom meeting church, which we can talk to each other and stuff, which is fun. That we went over to a neighbor's house who attends church with us. Her husband passed away over the holidays. Mm. She and I wrote and said, Hey, Sue, can we come to church? Can we come to church with you? And we all sat in the living room with our masks on and got to reminisce about her husband, Tom, and went to church together. And you know what? I would do it every Sunday, (laughs) every single Sunday. Just to have that opportunity to love each other well. Yeah, that's a great story. That just happened this past week. Yeah. Yeah. So that's really good that people were able to, you know, a lot of things are bad about this whole situation, but a lot of good is coming from it as well. Yeah, 
I think, I think we are going to, well, I know what you and I are going to talk about purpose and intention and those things. A lot of those things I think have come out of this protracted season of ambiguity of, of wondering what kind of purpose might we have, but also just realizing that if you look at things, the Lord for better or worse is giving us a season yeah. of quiet because I think he has a lot to say to us about who we are and whose we are and what does it mean to neighbor well what does it mm. mean to love each other well what does it mean to be quiet do we really need all the stuff and the mm. trappings and yeah. the busyness that we have had in our lives or could is there something to be gained from it I think that when we all look back on this time I know there's a lot of heartbreak. I know there's a lot of sorrow, yeah. but I don't know if we are going to just wholesale say that this season was the worst season ever, or are we going to look back like our grandparents yeah. that we knew look back at war times or times of my grandparents were old enough. My dad was significantly older than my mom. And so my grandparents, paternal grandparents actually went through the depression and, um, and, and I would ask them about that thinking, oh, that must've been the worst, but they had beautiful poignant mm -hmm. moments in it. And they looked back and said, you know, let me tell you everything that we learned through it all. Let me tell you the good things that happened. So that's my prayer for all of us is that we'll be able to look back in time and see God's fingerprints and to see, um, some real beautiful gemstones yeah. that were in the rubble. That's beautiful. I love, I love the way you think on that. And I do believe that God, you know, I, I believe God doesn't cause things to happen, but he allows it. He doesn't stop mm -hmm. it. There's reasons behind that. And like you say, yeah. there's good in everything. And there's, there is good coming out of this. And mm -hmm. I know when we look back, you know, like you say, people are sad, they're losing people, but at the same time, there's a lot to be gained through all this as well. Yeah. yeah. I have your book. I don't know. Um, can you read this? Is it backward? It is. It is. You can read it. You can I'm read impressed. it. I have it. Yes. <laughs> uh, one woman can change the world. And I'll tell you what, if that does not, if that cover does not catch somebody's attention, when it's on the shelf in a bookstore, I don't know what will because I've just I've gotten title, letters from folks saying the yes, title, the title, the title alone is enough to want to pick it up and, and want to know what it's about. So we will be talking about that. But like you said earlier, um, we what I want to talk about today is living um, an intentional life and what that really means, and to go along with that purpose what our purpose is yeah. in life yeah first let me ask you what do you think intention is and oh wow what is what is intentional living what is that okay you know yeah. and i know the whole intention especially the past few years it's become a big buzzword that i'm going to i'm going to write out my intentions i'm going to focus on my intentions mm -hmm. for the day i'm setting my intentions for the day and, um, and I appreciate that. We, we love buzzwords, don't we? Mm -hmm. We really love to find the cool thing or the new trend to say. When I, th when I purposely think about intention, I think about um, focus, right? It's where are our eyes set for that day or for that season? And so do I look at intention um, with kind of a bootstrapping, deliberate, I'll show you attitude. I really, I don't look at it um, in that way. In fact, one of the definitions of intention, it's an obscure definition, but it is the process of healing. Oh. And I love that because I think in many ways, if we just set our eyes rightly mm -hmm. and we look at the day ahead of us, and I talk in the book, 
it's not a spoiler alert or anything. I talk in the book, especially at the end, about filling the space you've been given. Because the women that I write about in the book, these women who have taught me a lot about purpose, taught me, um, they've helped reframe my, even my thoughts about what success looks like and those things that here in the United States, we can get so caught up in having a big voice, having um, a big platform. And if we're not really successful and can our idea be uh, replicated, can it be scaled? And so we have the, everything has to be huge. And um, most of the women that you're gonna meet in the book, get you'll ne you would have never met them had you not opened the pages, but they are busy focusing and they are focusing on a gap that they see and stepping into that space that's in front of them and asking the Lord to be active, an active participant really mm -hmm. in healing, in, um, in his plan of redemption, restoration, rescue. And so I think about that when I think about the word intention. I think about healing. It is, it's not again, that bootstrap and fight, it is us taking the next step with our eyes focused on what is in front of us for that day and in pouring our hearts into that and filling that space fully mm -hmm. um, to be an active participant in, in what the Lord's laid out. I, I love Ephesians 2.10 where it says that God's... Yeah. We are like heaven's poetry. He's written poetry already on our lives. And he has beautiful, he has this beautiful storyline for us. A beautiful storyline. We don't have to strive to figure it out. We don't have to do anything. Just set our eyes rightly on the day ahead and hold his hand and actually trust him. So, which is a scary thing. But well, to trust let me ask him. you this. So in a way, are you saying, to put it short, um, intentional living is, uh, I just lost my train of thought. It's basically focusing on that moment, the moment in life that you're living. Mm -hmm. Is that basically? It's, it is. It's not getting caught up in everything that you didn't okay. do in the past. It is not reaching into a future that is unknown and trying to figure it all out. It is saying, you know what? God has given me breath for this day. Okay. And it doesn't mean I don't care about the future because I do. And it doesn't mean that I don't hold stories from the past because I do. But it means that he's given me breath to live this day and to live this day purposefully and to yield it to him and to honor him and to, um, again, to, to trust yes. that he has this day and I get to actively participate in it, whatever it looks like. Because then from a purpose standpoint, it's not, we, we get really caught up in purpose of, oh, I have to have, again, the big thing, or I have to have the bullet journal goals. I have mm -hmm. to have all these things instead of saying, you know what? His purpose is me. His purpose is me loving him, loving others. And so today, if in my day I, I do laundry and it doesn't look sexy <laughs> or it doesn't look yes. superhero like because my day today looks fairly mundane to anybody who peeks in, my day is still purposeful. Well, it's still I, yes. purposeful. I wanted to get into that too. Um, let's talk a little bit about purpose. I know many people yeah. ask the question, what is my purpose? And I know I, I have asked that of myself in the last year and a half because I went through a lot of transition through my with my health and just moving a few times from one state to another. Uh, transitioning from job positions. And then when my health went downhill, I started getting into depression. And when I started getting into that, I'll say it was a pit. Um, I lost what my purpose was. I did mm -hmm. not know. And I was questioning myself. So what, what do you say purpose is? What, what does purpose look like? 
to me, when I read scripture and I look everything from, I look at Genesis one, I know that the Lord, especially in the new Testament, he, and he, he plays it out in story after story. Definitely. He equips each of us with certain gifts, certain talents, right? We each have a unique personality. We each have an emotional bent. We, and we have experiences that we live out. Um, however, oftentimes in, in that the pressure here, and, and I live in the U.S. I travel globally, but I live in the U.S., so that's going to be my framework. Mm -hmm. The pressure here in the U.S. can be that purpose has to be aligned with a doing, correct? Yes. My purpose would ultimately mean my job. It would mean the thing that I'm great at, I'm super successful at. Instead of us saying, what if my purpose was actually just to embrace how God designed me? And, and that will play out at my house. It might play out vocationally. It would play out if I'm a parent. But his purpose, it was me. If I look at Genesis 1, his purpose was not to create a bunch of folks to do a bunch of things. Right. His purpose, even the way he designed the universe so carefully. And if anybody gets all freaked out about faith versus science, look at that seven-day creation and tell me God didn't have a scientific head on straight. Yeah. He knew exactly how things were supposed to be created to, to create an environment that could sustain human life. Mm -hmm. He knew. He built it all out. Then, and what did he do? He ended the creation story with his pride and joy. Man and woman. And he said, this is very good. And then the only charge he gave us, he didn't give us a charge and said, okay, Laura, I need you to be an author and you better go out and make six figures and I need mm -hmm. you to do this. Or... Lori, you better be the best mom ever. And if you're not the best mom ever, then you're just a failure, right? He didn't. Right. All he did is he spoke to man and woman. He said, I'm giving you this earth and I trust you as leaders because you're my delight. I trust you to lead out. That was the end of it. He did not put a ton of rules and regulations as far as um, his expectations of us beyond trusting him, loving him. It's played out in the New Testament as well. People ask Jesus, so, hey, dude, give us the cool stuff. We want to know the inside scoop. And Jesus looks at him and says, love the Lord, love your neighbor. That's it. If you just did those two things, you wouldn't have to worry about mm -hmm. any of the other things. Mm -hmm. And that it starts with, and the way that we love the Lord is to actually trust him. Right. It's to trust him. It's to trust that he actually has my best interest at heart. It is to trust that when he looks at me, he does not look and roll his eyes and say, oh, I was expecting so much more from you. <laughs> he doesn't. He delights in us. His purpose is us. He created us in his image and his likeness. To to we glory, we will glorify him if we just trust him with our days. And does that mean that, that there is like, and I think so many folks get tripped up on this. There must be the one job. There must be the one place I'm supposed to live, all the stuff. And we make God's will out like this tiny, tiny center bullseye yeah. on a target. And then we're terrified that, oh, if I don't hit it with this laser point accuracy, then I will forever be floating around in something called his permissive will which secret, it's not in scripture, but we have, we write it out like, oh, I'm going to forever be almost, but not quite in God's eyes. And thinking that somehow he's just tapping his fingers yeah. on a, on a desktop and giving us side eye and tree and thinking, oh, should have never made you because you're worthless because you're not doing it exactly the way I wanted you to do it. Right. That is not the, even the character of God. So when I look at purpose, I don't think it's wrapped up in the job. I don't think it's wrapped up. It is wrapped up in relationship. 
his purpose for us is a relationship with him that then flows out in the way that we treat others, the way we listen carefully to others, the way we love others, right. <clears throat> you know? So and so, yeah, so the, the whole like, oh my gosh, there has to be only the one job or I have failed. You know what? I've had several jobs. They've all been great for the season. I've made some mistakes. <laughs> And God is still sovereign on the throne and has used all of them. And I bet we can all look back and say so, that same thing. Um, basically, you know, I'm hearing something that I don't think I've ever heard before just by listening to what you're saying. Back when I was questioning my purpose, basically anything that I do is not my purpose. I thought that years ago my purpose was to be a teacher stay a teacher until I retired and work with young children. But that's not where I'm at right now. Everything mm -hmm. has changed. My Everything's changed as we moved and uh, our environment and the surroundings, everything changed. So I thought my purpose changed at some mm -hmm. point. So I'm doing things like this and I'm getting to know different women and I'm reaching out and everything has changed, but even with this that I'm doing now is not my purpose. Yeah. That but is, the, the beautiful thing, though, when you could say. That change another year from now what I'm doing yeah. now. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically wearing the hats that we wear is not our purpose. I don't think that's our grand design at no. all. That is us getting to step into the days that we've been given. What I do love is something that you just said, which I did say, you know, God, he, he has crafted us. And as women, he crafts us uniquely, right? Our eyes see differently than a man's. Our nerve connections are different mm -hmm. than a man's. Uh, we hear differently than a man does. It doesn't make us better or worse or whatever. It's just, we are different and wired uniquely. And then God does, he does give us unique gifts and talents and bents. And if you say that, you know what, God has wired me to teach. Does that mean I have to be in a classroom teaching? No, <laughs> that means that, you know what, if I yield that gift to him, Laura, right now you're teaching. You are teaching right now, right? And if this podcast went away tomorrow, I have a sneaking <laughs> suspicion that you would still be a teacher, not because of the job that you do or anything, just because that gift is within you. And so it's it's the way you are wired to communicate, right? right? It isn't about, oh gosh, I'm a teacher. And then so unless I get paid and I have teacher as part of my title and I'm right. sitting in a classroom that I'm not using my gift. Um, I am, I am by nature, I can't not see story in things. The way it has worked out vocationally for me and crafted vocationally is that I do a lot of marketing. I write a lot. It's just, mm -hmm. those are things that are a natural outgrowth of that. But you and I sit together and have coffee I will naturally bend toward talking through story. That's just, right. that's just, that's just me. Um, and I love that because that isn't, I'm not failing God unless I am okay. having a job that says marketing director on right. it, or, you know, did I, would I have, would I have failed God had, Ravel not said yes to my book. No, as I, it's still, it's just, that's the way I communicate. I communicate through story and I, and to give that to the Lord and just say, however, Lord, you want me to use it in this day? I'm going to, I'm going to be thankful for that. Well, let me ask um, you this. Yeah. What is the difference between intentional living and purpose? Hmm. 
It's a, it's a great question. And that's called a verbal staller. No. <laughs> oh, goodness. No. No. Um, you know, I, I don't know if they're, they're, they're connected a, a lot. They are definitely connected. Yeah. Perhaps intentional living is just the purposeful step after purposeful step of saying, you know what, God, whatever yeah. you have designed me today, I, I am, I want to live that fully, whatever it looks like. It's moving. I want forward. to. Yeah, yes. I want to lay my head on the pillow at night and say, you know what, Lord, today was, it, it, whether it was a great day or a not great day or whatever, I'm so thankful for this day because I've lived it and I did my best to listen and to hear when you whispered, look left, look right, Lord, because you promised me that that's what you do. And I am, again, if my day looks like uh, a lot of cool stuff or what everybody thinks was cool stuff, Lord, I'm going to still yield it to you because I don't want anybody mm -hmm. to think that it's me just being cool. But if today is filled with mundane things, I still want to intentionally wake up today and say, thank you, God, for letting me yeah. live to see another day. And I want this day to glorify you. I want, I just, whatever the day brings, I want it to glorify you. I, I, I want my eyes to be open to see need. I want my ears to be open to hear a cry that maybe nobody else can. Um, I want to, I want to say a word perhaps that might bring encouragement or healing to somebody else. And I, I want to, I want to learn to love, to be the beloved that you say I am. I want to understand what it means to be truly loved by you, Lord. Um, I want to read something from your book. It's on page 68. And this is what you, this is what you wrote. People have written hundreds of articles about life not being truly fulfilling until we find that one thing we are supposed to do. Here's the truth. I'm not sure God has only one thing for each of us to do. I think his story is bigger than our small imaginations. I think his will is about what we do with the, one, with the time we're given here on earth, what we do with the days we're given. And that was one thing in your book that stuck with me when I read it. So I want to ask you, how do we know, how will we know what our God-given purpose is if it's not that one thing? How will we know inside that we're actually doing what we think, what God would want us to do? If we love God and are and embrace the love that he has given us. Cause I think it starts first, right? It isn't like, Oh God, I'm just going to fall in love with you. It is us understanding and embracing the love that he has for us. So um, then he can teach us how to love in return. I have to trust according to his scripture that if we embrace his love, that his Holy Spirit lives within us and that bears truth and that convicts, right? That he says, I'm with you. I am present. I am here. I am God with us. I am still Emmanuel. And so I, some folks will call it intuition. Some folks will call it a gut feeling, but I really have to believe and some folks get real scared about that in fact i remember early on in my faith journey um listening to some teaching that a lot of friends were had were super excited about and there was something in me that just said mm, something not right and i was told you're too immature in your faith you don't know when you really understand mm -hmm. then you're going to love this teaching well you know what 
that teaching was wrong. It was off base. But I was told that I didn't have it in me to actually have discernment. When the Lord in scripture promises that he is with us and he will lead us, right? Mm -hmm. He's not, he doesn't want us to fall down. He says that he is the author and the perfecter of our faith. He says that what he started in us, he will complete. And so if we trust him with our lives in that way, then I think that he would be kind enough to, show, to let us know that yes. to show us right and to let us know um and and then i think that he surrounds us if we will allow him to he can surround us with people who are who have wisdom and who actually also care about us who we can be honest with and we can have those conversations with who will cover us in prayer and who will not quickly um, try to distill things down into quick prescriptive moments, be, be able to have a good conversation about the things that we are anticipating doing. And I think that there is room in the, I think there's room in the relationship with our Lord to, 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 to stumble. He doesn't look at us and say, see, if you had just done it right, you wouldn't have gotten down there too bad. <laughs> right. He doesn't, right? We're going to we're gonna take those steps and we do it all the time. You know Whether what? or not we like to admit it, I we do it all the time. I interrupt, but you remind me of Emily P. Freeman when it oh. comes to your voices, the way that, do you know how Emily uses her voice? her voices when she says things oh, you do that yeah. too and it's so great <laughs> it's awesome well not to even be likened to her at all is yeah just i love it to my eyes because i she has those voices that come out that that are mm -hmm. able to talk to you and that's what you're doing too <laughs> thank you i appreciate that um i wanted to read also on the same page of your book 68 um another section it says god's purpose for your life is bigger than you think. His will isn't uh, excuse me. His will isn't an obscure road sign on a dark highway. His purpose is you, and his will is for you to live your life fully, no matter where that takes, no matter where that life takes you. His purpose isn't wrapped up in the one job or the one purpose or the one place. It's wrapped up in you. And that is exactly what you've been saying mm -hmm. all along. And I love that part. Um, once we've realized what our God-given purpose is, how do we live that out intentionally? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to the book into three things that I shared. In fact, I've already shared one, and that is to fill the space you've been given. But... One thing that I have learned is that there really there are three things, and one of them I am I have stated that this year I'm going to I'm doing my best to keep um, in the front of my mind. I have some accountability partners to help me, and I even I wrote an article for uh, the Brave Women series with Becky Bearsford and shared it um, in a blog post about bravery. Um, so the first is there is to be resolute, right? It is to not got, not get caught up in all the whims, not get caught up in all the culture. I call them culture vultures that man, right. they just, they lie in wait here in the, in the U S they, well, they're everywhere, but here, man, there's so many of them that will tell you that you are not doing quite enough or you need to do more. Um, I am a woman of a certain age that is constantly reminded that I need to remove wrinkles from my face in order to be um, accepted or whatever. And then I've got, I have beautiful friends that are in their late 20s and early 30s who don't feel that their voice is credible enough because they're too young. So we are, we hear those statements to us all the time that mm -hmm. we are too young, too old, we don't live in the right place, we have the wrong color skin, we have, a, you just name it, yeah. that our culture and, um, and society will scream at us. 
But what I find is um, when it comes to living a purposeful life, right, is that there is a resolute quality that says that I'm just going to remain steadfast to what I know. I'm not going to get caught. I'm not going to not going to worry about all the stuff that I might be missing along the way. I'm just going to, I'm going to stay steadfast to what I know. I'm going to stay steadfast to believing that God actually does have my best interest at heart, that he does love me, that, that my days, that the days that I get to walk into every day, that there is opportunity. Um, does it need to be big? Does it need to be flashy? No. And so I'm just going to be steadfast in what I know. I'm, I'm going to be undaunted. I'm going to go into the day knowing full well that there are going to be mm -hmm. disappointments, that the rug might be pulled out from underneath my feet. I live in a world that is, that is shaded by sin. It is the world that I live in. And until the day that Christ returns in whichever way your particular denomination decides that he's coming back or doing whatever. But you know what? There is a day when a new heaven and a new earth and things will be fully restored and we'll get to see the color green as it was meant to be. We'll get to see the things um, that are not clouded over. But right now we're still living in a cloudy world, right. even on a bright sunny day. And so I know that disappointment is going to be woven in. It's woven into the map. I know that there are potholes that are going to be in the road. I know that there are going to be days that I'm going to feel absolutely defeated. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to pray that that I'm not going to be, I'm going to remain undaunted by that because I'm going to know going in that you know what, disappointment. I am disappointment is going to teach me something, so I'm going to stay focused. It's it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And then I'm going to let go of things of my big, I, if it doesn't go exactly the way I want it to, then it must not be great plans. I am going to, I am going to look at and say, wow, I thought I was going to, this would be the kind of job that I had. I, I'll tell you, I'm in ministry full time right now. If you would have asked me 12 years ago, do you think you're going to be in ministry full time? Mm. I would have laughed at you. And said, that is not my purpose. I've even been told by nonprofits, I need to stay in the corporate world because this is where I'm strong. If you would have asked me a decade ago if I would have had a book released, I would have laughed at you. And I even wrote it down. I don't have 50,000 of anything in me. I write commercials. I write cute captions. I don't write books. <laughs> Right. If, if right. I, yeah. So we have all of these big, bold statements that were like, I'll never, I'll do whatever things. Um, and, but I also, I, I know that I need to let those go to know that there are pieces of my life. I've not even gotten, there are pages in my story. Yeah. I've not gotten to yet in God, if I'm really going to trust him and my sweet friend Flo who is in the book. I talk a lot about her because she has a special place in my heart for a lot of reasons. She lives here in Austin, Texas, in a part of town that you wouldn't want to live in. Um, it is, it's kind of a rough and tumble area. It is, um, th there's a lot of gentrification that's going on in it right now, but it was an area that was ignored for years by the city. And she's had the opportunity to go a million different places. She is had folks say, oh, you know what, if you'll just move here, you can make more money, you can do more things. And she's like, man, but if I'm going to trust God with my life, I got to trust him with what my life is doing right now. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm not going to worry about, oh, but I could be doing more and making more money and having more impact and doing everything. If I would just follow that person's advice, when I don't, that's not feeling that that's, I think God's okay with me being here and staying here right now. But I love her statement. If I'm really going to say I trust God with my life, I'm going to trust him with where my life is right now. Right. Good. And so, so it's those things. It is staying steadfast. It is, um, it is letting go of the things. It, it's remaining undaunted. It is saying, you know what? I expect 
there to be hardship. I expect there to be disruption. I expect there to be disappointment. That is this life, this very human life. And I expect it to be there. And then, and yet I know that God is sovereign and that he is a redeemer and he is a restorer. And so he has a plan even in all that muck. And then I'm going to let go of thinking that I have got to be the queen of my world. And if things don't go exactly the way I want them Mm -hmm. to, that somehow it can't be God's will, knowing full well that his will for my life, there are pieces of it I haven't even seen yet. Yes. I know the two of us are almost about the same age. So (laughs) when it comes to the wrinkles and looking in the mirror and seeing yourself age and women comparing themselves, I know what that's like. Um, Mm -hmm. When it comes to my purpose and my intentional living, um, I'm still learning on that. and I'm still going through it. But I think the older that I get, the more that I'm realizing that my life isn't about me. Mm-hmm. It's about God. And it's about giving what I have to God and everything that I do glorifying him. I think mm-hmm. that's where I see my purpose going. And um, I don't know where I was at all those years of my life. I didn't see that raising my children and like you said, wearing all those hats and thinking this is what I need to be doing now. And this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm supposed to be over here and I'm supposed to be doing this in church. And, you know, this is my duty is doing this, but I didn't realize back then that everything I was doing was actually glorifying God and Mm -hmm. everything that I do now. And in the future, I hope to as well. Um, Yeah. I wanted to ask you to, um, let me look, um, on page 67, can I share a story that you shared in your book? Sure. Okay. Um, it goes like this. I think about the Sunday morning I spent under a bridge in downtown Austin. The smells of dust and city and cigarettes mingled with warm vanilla lotion from the bold embraces of the homeless who gathered for church and a good meal. As a ragtag band played an old hymn, I watched a woman dance with abandon, her long braids keeping time with the clothing that draped her frail, weathered body. She looked at me and nodded, knowing and then saying, watch out because God is speaking. This is where it's good, honey. This is where it's powerful. Can you talk about that just briefly, what that moment was like for you? And Sure. Uh, I still have her picture, too. I have a picture of her. I only got it from behind with her braids and her hand up. And um, and then another picture of her um, shopping cart with her pup laying on the ground. We were there for ministry, right? as those of us who are blessed to be a blessing often do. We were there to uh, help serve a lunch. And so we were invited in. There's a a gentleman here who started with church under the bridge and then started doing, it's called Mobile Loaves and Fishes, and now has an entire community for the near homeless where um, folks can get out of homelessness and get into tiny homes and just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And his whole world is about dignifying people and such a reminder. But um, that morning I was there to do what I thought was ministry, right? I was there doing the good thing um, as a part of my church, which is great. I love, I love it when um, local congregations serve together and go beyond the walls of Mm -hmm. their sanctuaries and go serve so we were that was our thing it was given it was a Sunday and we were all out all around doing the cool things that we were supposed to do to serve the city what I wasn't expecting though I was expecting to go and to um, provide care and to make sure that some food was in bellies what I wasn't expecting was to wish in that moment that I was homeless because of the security 
that I saw in those people because of their faith, that it was not wrapped up in trappings, that it was not wrapped up in um, how you looked or the neighborhood that you lived in or any they of those things. To lose. No, we and to lose. and we think we do. Mm -hmm. And so instead of, um, yeah, I was so overwhelmed by her. What? Because what she reminded, she just reminded me of how lost I felt. And she had something that I craved. Mm. And that was an intimacy and the security with a God who created the heavens and earth and then created her and mm. called her his beloved. And, um, and so, and that's why I wanted to put it in the book because so oftentimes too, when we think about uh, the poor, we think about things, we often think about developing countries and that kind of stuff. And then we look at the homeless in our own society here and it's so easy for us to cast judgment. Yes. Well, if, if they would just, and we fill in the blank, then things would be okay for them. Mm -hmm. And we don't take any time to step into their story. And I had done that. Even though I didn't verbalize it that day, I was like, I'm going to go help the homeless. Yay me. <laughs> I'm going to go help the homeless because that's what Jesus would do. He'd go help the homeless. He'd go give them chicken. So, I mean, I was like, I'm going to go help the homeless and give them chicken, <laughs> right? Oh. And I'm going to be there to pray for them because you know they're broken. Yeah. <laughs> and I am just there to minister. And again, man, the Lord just turned it on me. Well, let me ask you this. As, as he is so wont to do, right? He yes. is so good if we keep our eyes open of even the way he, he disciplines us is so, so gracious. And that day he was like, Sweetie, she's got something that you actually want. She she truly trusts me. She trusts me. You say you do, but you got all your stuff. Yeah. Would you trust me the way she did today? And so she told me that, and I cry, cried. What I didn't say, she ended up praying for me. It wasn't me praying for her. <laughs> she, she had to pray for me. Well, what, let me ask you this. What... What did that do for your your personal purpose and intentional living, meeting her and experiencing yeah. that? It reminds me, honestly, it, it perhaps it serves in what I use it now is on it is like a cautionary tale. If I get too caught up again, because it's easy, the gravitational pull. Yeah of of life is so easy to um for us to it grabs hold the accuser of the brethren and sistren or whatever the accuser of of um will constantly tell us that we are lacking in some regard and so it's it's easy to forget it's easy to get caught in trappings it's easy to get panicked about what, you know, what will tomorrow hold? What will tomorrow hold? I don't know. What will tomorrow hold? Can I, do I have all my plans for tomorrow? I don't have that. And the Lord will like, don't you remember, sweetie? Don't you remember? You don't just hold my hand. That's the only thing I'm asking you to hold yeah. is my hand. And just trust today. Will you trust me with today? And will you then trust me with tomorrow? If you're given tomorrow, will you trust me with it? And so it's good. I, 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 I love that the Lord is kind enough to um, like kind enough to be honest and say, hey, nothing's changed. Hold my hand. Hold my hand. Remember your friend under the bridge? Remember she said, this is where it gets good. She was not talking about lunch. Right. She was talking about me. She wasn't talking about the chicken. <laughs> no, she like, wasn't talking about the chicken, sweetie. <laughs> she wasn't talking about the chicken. She was talking about me. 
Well, let me ask you, I'm going to hold your book up again. Um, sure. I'm hoping somebody um, that's listening will be able to win this um, for free. Me too. Um, <laughs> um, this is an amazing read. It is. Just quickly, can you um, explain to everybody what this book is about? Sure. This book is, it is about embracing, and I know the subtitle says embracing your God-designed influence and impact right where you are. And this book truly is about embracing who you are as a woman. It is about um, seeing yourself through the eyes of a God who carefully designed you, handcrafted you, and said and called you beloved. He calls you the apple of his eye. He calls you his delight. He is not disgusted with you. He is that he is not a God who is relegating you to a particular place right. or he is a God who wants to walk with you. And so the story in the book is a multiple of stories. It is that story of his careful love for you and how that plays out in things like purpose and identity shape, courage, value, and worth. And it's just framed through the stories of some women I've just been really blessed to meet who have taught me, and they're women around the world. And they remind because, me of women that you would see in the Bible, that you read mm -hmm. about in the Bible. Yeah. You wouldn't think that women like that exist today but yeah you've met them i have but the thing is laura you're that person you are you are as much a dorcas or tabitha right taking the gifts that god has given you and the way he has crafted you and then sharing those gifts in a new fresh way as he gives you strength and energy to do i that's why i like i love the story of dorcas in scripture right she was a seamstress. She knew, man, she knew how to sew. Yeah. I am not Dorcas. But she had talent and gifts. She fell in love with Jesus. Did he say, I'm so sorry, that was your natural gift. And you got to lay that down. I got something else for you to do. No. He was like, woman, you know how to sew clothes. Yeah. So here are some new folks for you to sew clothes. And she just... She did the same thing on a Tuesday, right? After falling in love with Jesus that she had done on Monday. She just did it with this new and infused power and strength. And I love that about, because it wasn't again, like everything changed. She had to do something uh -huh. else. It was, she just, she did the things that she knew to do. She used the same gifts and talents. Her voice didn't change. Nothing got weird. And and so we are those women in scripture. We are, right? I'm, I'm thankful that I got to meet these women because they do live in places where there is a lot of oppression against women. Mm -hmm. There is, uh, and so it helped me also because a lot of times we here in our country will talk about oppression and things. And I'm like, yeah, we do have some, but I tell you there's some places where it's, like significant where a woman can be killed for speaking but yet they're speaking and but if you ask them it's not like as they're all like yeah watch me i'm so tough they it's all just they are. Yeah. they're just doing the, the thing will go back to emily p freeman they're just <laughs> doing the next right thing right, right? Thing. they are just they're just taking the next step they are they're not trying to figure out how to replicate or create a multi-million dollar business or how to expand their ministry or how to get on a big stage they just doing the next the next step they take the next step and i love that because it has simplified my life mm -hmm. um do i i mean in the midst of a pandemic and all that kind of stuff yep i've been reminded oftentimes of the words that are in there to like oh my gosh you know 
I'm freaking out because things aren't things aren't going according to plan. And I've had to lay down a lot of big ideas that I already had. Mm -hmm. And then I think about Lucy in far northeast India. Your heart is still back there with all those women. I can. It is. Yeah. It is. But I sit. I'm like, yes. oh my gosh, you know, if I was sitting with Lucy right now, she would look at me and say, "Just do the next right thing." Just and you know, her whole thing is like, man, I just, I just want to die. When I die, I just want to know that I've just been spent. Whatever. It's all good. I'm like, oh, it's like I don't want to. I don't want to be die gracefully. I just want to be spent. I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. <laughs> Me too. Um, but I love that, that, you know, I, that's my, my prayer is that the book will get to take you places so you can hear a collective of voices, a and really beautiful symphony it of is. voices to remind you of just how incredible you are as a woman. And it is not in a girl boss Right. Yeah, way and it's not a hearth and home way it is just humble you are really amazing yeah. as a woman and um and and the lord gosh he likes you he doesn't <laughs> just love you he actually likes you yeah you know so yeah well i totally appreciate your book and i'm so glad you came on and you know, to talk about intentional living and purpose and letting me read some of your book out loud. Oh, thank you. Now, I know you have a project going on right now. And a lot of us have this thing that we use as one word, like a new year mm -hmm. comes up. Um, like my word this year is self-care. Yeah. But you're, you're working on a word and it's gather. G-A-T-H-E-R, gather. And you say- Gather. There's so it's many. All over, it's all over Target, Walmart. They're everywhere. <laughs> how there's many? Gather. You said there's how many meanings so far that you uh, to that word? I am I, I am a word nerd, I guess. But I love to, when I feel that kind of nudge about a word of the year, I love to look it up just to see what the definition yeah. is. Well, as I like when I'm saying, oh, intentional, there's an obscure meaning. It means healing. Um and what I realized with gather, I know that there are more definitions in that, but I found 12 different definitions. And so it kind of sparked this thing in me that, you know what, I'm going to take one of the definitions each month and I'm going to ask the Lord to, I'm going to allow that to be kind of woven into my quiet time, my, my study and journal time. And then I'm going to share it on Instagram and on my blog and things. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm now t almost two months into writing things. I've had somebody say, oh, is this your next book? And the answer is, well, I don't know. Would you buy it? <laughs> but <laughs> it is. And the thing is that it's not really um, to invite somebody on a journey with me as I'm walking the road. Right is uh it's definitely vulnerable um there are things that i have already shared that i wasn't expecting to share um things that i have written that i'll be sharing uh, in the coming weeks and months things from my past that the lord is bringing to memory and that's what i love too about the lord just overall it's not that he's like yeah that was for five years ago I love that he will bring to your remembrance something, a beautiful thing that you were taught or something that you read or something maybe that you wrote in a journal from the past. And, and then he puts more beautiful context around it and meaning around it. And so that's what I'm doing. So if anybody follows me on Instagram. Where is that um, at? Where can they? Oh, it's, it's Ronnie Rock, which is R-O-N-N-E-R-O-C-K. I had to be a little different so folks wouldn't think I was a dude, even though I do get a lot of friends in trouble and they're like, I'm going to go out with my friend Ronnie and <laughs> husbands go, who's he? I'm like, oh, it's a girl. Um, but uh, so I'm just, I'm sharing those things um, on Instagram as long as the Lord gives me breath and, well, and I'm following along. whatever. Totally enjoying it. 
And I think it could Thank be you. your next right book. The next. Oh, uh, <laughs> next book. Evil, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll just see. I just want, I've really, um, this year I want my, I just want my time with the Lord. I want all of us to have that, that I want us to be compelled by the love of Christ and not feel the compulsion of culture um, or that sense of obligation. That, oh my gosh, if I don't do everything, I'm, I'm, I'm going to fail in some way. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm praying. So like I said, in this season, and we're we're almost two months down, and I'm still sticking with it. So hey, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have truly enjoyed this conversation. Um, like I said, we rescheduled it a few different times. This is like we the did. Third time we finally were able to do it today, and I've been so blessed just by talking to you. It's been great. And well, where can everyone find you? Where's that one place? That if everybody wanted to look you up, where would you want them to go? You know what? I would say Instagram because I okay. think that is the most, probably the most interactive, consistent. It's consistent. I do find I'm in my DMs. I'll, I love to pray for you guys and often even say that um, on Instagram. It's like, hey, if you need prayer, send me a message. We're just going to pray right now. But I just, I feel like Instagram still for the most part is a, is a kind and tender place. So that's where I hang out. I do, I, I put stuff on my website. I'm over on Facebook and all that kind of stuff too. But if you're on Instagram, hang out with me there. That's good. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. Oh, Laura, this was fun. I this enjoyed fun. it. Yes, so I can't wait until can... we see each other in real life human yes. person that's not on a screen. Yes, <laughs> without a mask. Um, without a mask maybe I can have you back sometime when you write that next book or maybe you can come back and we'll talk about all the different meanings of the word gather that sounds good all I'll right. gather my thoughts and we'll talk about it <laughs> sounds good <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much thank you I'll talk to you later okay bye-bye